Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a special on the ground at the VTUG SummerSlam 2019. Uh, in the keynotes this morning, there's a lot of discussion about what's happening to IT operations people and all of the changes that are impacting their career. One of the keynote speakers is Josh Atwell, who's a senior technology advocate with Splunk. Josh, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Stu. Always good to be here. All right. So uh, you waited till the final VTUG to show up. Uh, so better late than never. I, that's uh, exactly you know, the way I look uh, at uh, it. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, yeah, you know, before, you know, I want to talk really here about, you know, community and jobs. And of course, that's, you know, right, right in your sweet spot to talk right. about, you know, um, I met you, you know, years ago through the virtualization community. Mm -hmm. uh, virtualization community, always good at, you know, people, you know, sharing and contributing and learning uh, with each other. And, you know, how have you seen that, you know, changing as we go into these new worlds of, you talk about new ops and, you know, cloud computing and uh, all, all of these new things that are, have been changing. Wow, so that uncovers a whole lot. Uh, I think and, one of and the... And we need you to do it in, you know, under five minutes. So. I, I don't <laughs> think I've been ever to have any conversation under five minutes, but I think we could pull this off. Uh, I think that during the virtualization emergence, um, we required the bloggers and, and the contributors in the community in order for us as a, as a industry to mature, right? Uh, even the vendors weren't wholly prepared on everything that they were going to need to deliver to handle that change. Uh, I think we're seeing a similar type scenario play out now as digital transformation is impacting so much of what IT and development does. Uh, we have a whole new crop of mechanisms for you know, getting people you know, on board and understanding these trends and these new mechanisms. And I think the, the biggest way that people have really gravitated toward recently from a community standpoint are around uh, events like your DevOps meetups, DevOps days events, like those have been a huge, and then video. Like video has been the other element that has been uh, just completely exploding everywhere throughout this. And um, you know, it used to be very focused on the written technical documentation. Now it's, I'm gonna show you step by step how to do all these things. And, um, and then the last bit that I think is really interesting is because of the changes that we face now, the cultural elements are vastly different. And so a lot more conversation as a community about um, the cultural impacts of more transparency, addressing burnout, how do you, you know, lead up and, and influence up in an organization. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah, Josh, Josh did I see you were actually advocating reading books, uh, you know, in, in your presentation uh, this morning. Don't yeah. you know, millennials, uh, you know, if I, if I can't get it on TikTok um, or, or something like that right. in, you know, my, my daily newsletter, uh, you know, it's probably a bit, little bit too long form for me. I, I, I jest, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe me expand a little bit about what, what you were going at there. Well, I think one thing that's really important to note is that specifically within the IT space and with IT operations, uh, and as we saw in the keynote today, most people have 10 plus years of experience, right? Uh, most of the younger folks coming in into operations or doing operational roles kind of have a different perspective in view, and they will have more of a development background in what they're doing. And so uh, it's still hyper relevant to uh, enterprise IT and IT operations as a whole for you know, consumption through books. And there's some really high quality books that, uh, that have been published in the last few years. Yeah, uh, maybe if you could speak a little bit of that, that organizational dynamic, you know, the, the IT people versus, you know, hey, who are those developers? You know, they, they, they used to just, you know, build their stuff and tell me to make it work out there. Uh, they, they dress a little bit different. They, they, I don't understand their language. Uh, you know, are, are we seeing IT and uh, the developers, you know, coming together or at least working together? Uh, I, I think it's inevitable that we're going to continue to see more and more of that. Uh, as I talked about uh, earlier today, when cloud was kind of emerging and you know, we had rogue IT people, you know, development teams in particular, going out looking for an easier option to get the IT resources they need, most IT departments were like, oof, we dodged a bullet. We're not going to have to deal with agile development and lean development practices. Uh, well, then it turned out, well, we actually need to modernize uh, all of our applications in various different ways. We need to rationalize where they need to go. There's a lot better cost models for some of these applications. Let's get out of the, you know, spending money on things that aren't differentiating to our business because we have to. And so, as such, those bridges have to be developed. And, you know, it is on operations to kind of change, like, the model at which they're developing, or not developing, but uh, helping developers. All right, uh, Josh, uh, explain what this new ops thing is that, that you're talking about. Yeah. I know you've got the new ops days. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, so explain a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, new ops is a realization, frankly, that the way that we've operated IT and managed IT 
uh, isn't going to work going forward. Uh, with the addition of greater complexity, applications being broken out, microservices, various cloud platforms, to, you know, deploying out private cloud, using software as a service, IT operations has a much more diverse and much more complex job ahead of them. Uh, and it's also increasing the scale at which what they need to operate. And so uh, new technologies, new frameworks for how they operate have to be deployed. Um, there's a lot of talk about uh, bimodal IT, but this isn't really about bimodal IT. It's about Here's what you need to do to operate the new, and you also then need to modernize everything that you've been doing to work within those same models. All right, and, and Josh, you're holding the mic so that our audience can't see the t-shirt. So maybe just show oh. that for a second and explain that one. Uh, so, you know, at Splunk, one of the things that we pride ourselves on are having really interesting t-shirts, and this is really just getting, uh, just having people get out of the way and let the systems work for you. Yeah, abs absolutely. But it, it's a good point is, you know, IT need, can't be the group of no um, or the blocker or the, yeah, we'll get that done in, you know, 12 to 18 months and send us a pile of money. Uh, we need to be able to move fast. The theme that I hear over and over again is it's the agility and tying things to the business. And I thought that was a great point in, in your presentation is if you don't understand, you know, what the key business objectives are this quarter yep. and this year, not saying you need to be, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid on everything, but if you're not aware of it, you might be running in the total wrong direction, and therefore, if things change, you, be, you can't be one of those, oh, geez, why am I out of a job? Oh, well, maybe I wasn't relevant to the business. Yeah, and I think what most IT organizations feel is that they don't get respected for the work they're doing, and it's primarily, in large part, because they can't show the work that they're doing is tying to a business value. Um, and so until they start making that transition uh, and then becoming an organization that is a driver of business initiatives and business value and customer value, they're, they're, they're going to have to um, reconcile some of the things that they're doing. Okay, uh, final thing, Josh. So are yes. there any skill sets or jobs that, you know, I hate to see it's like, oh, you know, the hot thing out there, but, you know, as, as people kind of look at their career, especially th those that have been in IT operations for a while, uh, what, what are some areas that, that you, you'd recommend them to start with? Uh, well, I think one area that, well, it's two core areas that I think people really need to invest. Uh, developing good discipline about being data-driven, data-managed, so being able to look at uh, data management platforms, be able to extract, ask good questions of the data, and then act on that data, whether it's an automated response or developing a plan for remediation or improvement. Uh, and then the other is the adoption of automation frameworks, specifically being able to have an understanding of some, uh, some type of programming language. You don't have to be a full-on developer, but you should be able to look at work other people have done, know how to dissect that, manipulate and manage it to what you need to be able to do so that you can remove yourself from the workflow, get out of being ticket-driven, and allow the systems to work for you. All right. Sounds great. Josh Atwell, always a pleasure to catch up with you on and off camera, so thanks Absolutely. so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. All right. Uh, more coverage, as always, at thecube.net. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching.